Welcome to Manitic Stringworks. Remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for more video content. Well, hey there, welcome back to Manitic Stringworks. So today on the workbench we have this classic jazz bass. So it's a Fender jazz bass made in Mexico, 2019. So with a bit of a twist. It has active electronics, noiseless jazz pickups. You know, we've seen this Fender high mass bridge before. Active passive switch. So we've got a volume, a blend. I believe this is the mid and treble, and that's the bass, or that's the mid, <laughs> and this is the bass and treble. We'll find out. It's got some inlays, and a fretboard, some black binding, classic Fender headstock. Let's flip it over. So, made in Mexico, special edition, maple neck, skunk stripe. It's this nice carve at the heel. I like that. Alder body. Two 9 volt batteries. <laughs> Better have some extra batteries in your gig bag. So the owner has dropped off the base for a setup. It's new to him, but I think we can see what issue we've got here. Here at the 17th fret, that's crazy high. And it really has to do with a pretty big bow and neck. Let's see. sight down the neck you can see that so I'm hoping that the truss rod works well and we can straighten that out without any mechanical assist or heating this up all right well let's get started all right so well the first place to start is always with the neck relief and the truss rod make sure it's working the owner did have the allen key so a 3 truss rod key and the allen key for the saddles in the gig bag so i'm going to loosen the strings a bit just to get better access so the a and the d string <clears throat> let's have a look and see if this will move so we'll loosen it first a bit. Oh, that's tight. Okay, it's turning, it's loosening, so that's counterclockwise. So let's see if we can tighten it a bit. Oh boy, that's tight. That is really tight. Okay, well, I'm able to turn it, but is it doing anything? <laughs> That's the question. I'm going to find this slot again. Let's do that again. Okay. Okay, well it's moving, which is a good sign. But there's only so much that it will do. see the notch scale here my homemade notch scale let's see if we've been able to straighten this neck out without any string tension on it so I'm going to slacken off the strings completely all right there's no string tension on here okay Bad. It's pretty 
flat. I'm going to try giving it one more little turn. If I can get maybe an eighth of a turn, that would be good. A little more leverage. Oh. <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard. <laughs> Did I get a back bow in it yet? Uh, yep, yeah, a little bit of a back bow. Tiny, tiny bit. Good. Okay, well. I'm going to leave the neck like that for a little bit under tension. <laughs> so if I have a bit of a back bow, that's not a bad thing right now because of the amount of up bow that we had in this space under tension. So I'm going to leave it like that for a little while. Let the neck sort of settle in. And ooh, there's some fret ends here that I don't know if you can hear that. Right here. <laughs> as soon as we get down to the 15th, 17th, 19th frets, it's pretty bad. Okay. So I'm going to let that sit for a little while and double check it before we start any setup on the base. Hopefully that did the trick. Well, as you can probably guess by the setup, we're not able to just turn the truss rod enough, tighten it up to get the relief we want. So we're going to have to mechanically assist this neck a bit. So that means clamping the body to the table, and bending the neck down, and then tightening the truss rod all the way. And then that will give us the tension necessary when the strings are put on. that We can release the truss rod a little bit, hopefully. So my goal here is to release the truss rod completely, Put the neck into a pretty substantial back bow, tighten the truss rod all the way, and then let that sit for a little while, and then we'll test it under string tension. So I've just got on my workbench some clamps set up here to hold the body in place. There's some leather calls, these protective calls. So I'm going to loosen the neck now. There we go. Again, I don't want to strip this truss rod knot out because it's so tight. <laughs> Amazing. Super stiff. This is only yeah, like a four year old base, right? 2019, so. Ideally, I'm going to loosen this right off. There's no tension on it. I'm pretty sure it's not a two-way truss rod. Oh, there we go. Now it's just, uh, it's really not doing anything. Let me just go a little further to see if it engages again. I'm, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's not a two-way truss rod. No. Okay. So there we go. Let's see what condition the neck is in now. So there's a substantial up bow, and if I take a 22 thousandths feeler gauge, I'll put that back on. You can see that the 22 goes under, yeah, so the third fret it's not going, fourth it starts to 50 out. No problem. All the way down. I suspect around the, yeah, here we go. It's the 12th, 13th, and then it stops. So, you know, substantial up bow in the base. So, again, the truss rod is loose. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna All right, now I have clamp set up so the body is clamped down to the table. I've got my clamp over the first fret fingerboard with my leather call. I don't want to put pressure on the nut here. Make sure you're on the... Okay, so there we go. I'm engaged. 
So now what I want to do is put this in a back bow. So I've got my support here right at the 12th fret. That should be good. And I'm going to bend this neck down a bit. So I'm going to put some pressure. There you go. Now I'm not going to be able to check with the notch part. But if I look with the straight part of my ruler here, we don't really have a back bow yet. So let's continue. And just slowly. Oh. You can hear it now. Okay, that's a good sign. Just a little more. Again, being a little gentle here. So now I've got it in this position. I'm going to tighten up this truss rod. And then we want this truss rod to be as tight as it can go, basically. Tightening up well. And getting to the end. Again, make sure you're seated properly. Okay, well, that's like super tight. <laughs> I'm going to let that sit for about half an hour. Then I'll release the clamp. It's going to spring back a little bit, but hopefully we have enough back bow in here. That the truss rod and tightening here will keep it in place. Here, let me see if I can get it a little more. Ooh, yeah. Okay. We'll leave it like that. All right, so we've been about a half an hour. Um, it's been clamped up, sitting here, tighten the truss rod all the way. So I'm gonna release this clamp. I'm gonna put some pressure on it so it doesn't just pop up. There we go. That should spring back a little bit, which it did, which is fine. So what I wanna see is if we still have some sort of back bow, so now I can use the notch part. We do have a back bow here. Try it on the fret. It's right around the seventh, eighth fret. Okay, well, next thing we have to do is string it up again and test it out. So we're back on the bench, but before I uh, string it up again, these fret ends that were catching me, so the base side is fine, but the treble side, there's a few here. You can hear that. They're really catching my fingers, so I think I'll give these a little file down first <laughs> before I restring it. So I'm just using this sort of combination file here. So it's convex here with a safe bottom, two file ends on the sides. And then the top is safe here, so you're not going to scratch anything. So you can use the convex part, go on the fret ends, and that rounds over the corners. You can use the flats to get those fret tangs that hang over. And then you can also use the safe bottom to ride along the fretboard and sort of curl over those fret ends. So it's a great tool. 
These ones are made by Hosco in particular and they come in three different sizes. I'm also going to take the time just to hit these frets lightly with a 400 and a 1000 fret eraser. They're a little dirty, they're not worn or anything. Just a light cleaning and polishing. Okay, so the base is restrung. Tape on the first fret, I'll use 12 thousandths feeler gauge. And at the seventh fret, yeah, just, just touching barely. I'd like to see it a little bit lower, but I think with what we've already done to the neck, we're going to leave it like that. Let it sit. I'll talk with the owner about it. Well, I was able to tweak a little more out of it. <laughs> so now we're sitting at just a 12 thousandths of an inch relief at the 7th fret, which is fine. But that's as much adjustment as we're going to get out of this neck. So I'm going to move on to the string height. And earlier I had dropped down the saddles because they were very high anyways. So I want to see it around 564 normally at the 17th fret. And that's a little low. Yeah, you can hear it, right? When it's scraping, that means it's touching it, pushing the string out of the way. So I think I'll raise these saddles up, all of them, just a little bit. All right, so this bridge is very adjustable, which is nice. It's the Fender high mass bridge. It's a little dirty. And we're gonna lower these saddles. Remember to lower them equally. Sorry, we're gonna raise them. <laughs> Just a little bit. Still just touching. Remember, you want both of these screws to be engaged as well. You don't want one floating around, the other one supporting everything. That's going to come up a little bit. Okay. I'm just doing like a eighth of a turn almost. That's good. And I'm looking for 564 which is about two millimeters. <coughs> Excuse me. We're gonna get up here. Okay, I'm happy with that. Of course, I'm gonna check with the string action ruler as well. So 564 or about two millimeters. And on fenders, it's always at the 17th fret. Yeah, that's looking good. We'll move on to intonation now, so at the 12th fret, so we want to tune each string, and then we want to play the 12th fret harmonic, and then fretted note. So let's G string, yeah. now these are not new strings, they're older strings, I don't know how old they are, it's harmonic, a little flat, the fretted note. A little sharp. So we'll do the D, the harmonic, a little sharp. Harmonic. Not bad. A little flat like the tuning. The E. Not bad. So again, it's not going to be perfect, but we get as close as we can. So, <coughs> I'm 
on one string, so we'll do it on the G. It's a little bit sharp. So we're going to move the saddle back to flatten the string. So again, Fender got it right from the beginning. Easy adjustments. Well, that's in tune now. <laughs> Still a little sharp. Yeah, I just have to do it a few times, back and forth, little adjustments. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's see if we can get a little more out of it. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I'll do the rest of the strings, get them as close as we can. So I'm curious with the neck issue we had, you know, what is this nut action like? So press down at the third and then press over the first fret. That's actually just like that. It's pretty good. It's not much bounce there at all. Now I'll start with 22 thousandths. So the base I like to see 20, 22 at the most. Ah, that's getting under there. Just barely. Okay. I'm going to try 18. I mean, that's the low end of the range. That's barely getting under the sixth string. Okay, well, we're pretty low then, but... I don't hear any buzz. That's something on my bench buzzing there. <laughs> there we go. So, as long as it's not buzzing up here, it's... You know, low enough. So I think we'll leave it as is. It can't go any lower though in my opinion because then we'd really get some buzz. So before I adjust the pickup height um, I do want to test the electronics. Also I did ask the client if he wanted me to remove this plastic <laughs> on the pick guard. It's getting a little ratty looking. So he said yeah go ahead so I'll take that off as well. I have to take all the screws out. Let's check the electronics. <clears throat> okay, well, we have noise. So this is a master volume. This will be a blend. I feel the indent. So let's check that. Yeah, so all the way. We're starting to hear this one. Okay. Now let's see. Yeah. So that's doing nothing because it's in passive mode. Okay, well that slid out pretty well. Let's see if we can get this plastic off now. <laughs> Some people like to keep it on forever. I don't mind keeping it on for a while, but as soon as it starts to look really ratty, I don't want to see it come off. Alright, for all you ASMR types. Well, that looks a lot better. <laughs> Clean off any uh, this polishing compound. Let's fill in there. You can see how shiny the finish is under the pick guard compared to in the body. I think you can see that. Hopefully, really shiny under there. <laughs> okay, what's this under here? A little sticker. Push that back in. I had to loosen that up get at the pick guard. 
So I should be able to just slide these back under without having to loosen the strings or anything. There we go. Alright, back in place. Good. Alright, let me button it up. Well, last thing I'm going to do on the setup, of course, is pick up height. So we're going to look at um, on the base side, 1 8th of an inch using my gauge and the treble side, 3 30 seconds. Push down the last fret, try and slide this gauge under. Do on both sides. So the pickups are a little high on both sides, so let's bring them down. Of course, a jazz bass has four screws two on the bass, two on the treble. Pretty tight. almost compressed all the way. These noiseless pickups are like double stacked so they're a little thicker than a regular you know single coil jazz pickup. Don't want to crack these cases either, right? All right? That's good. Give it a little dusting. Alright so we're all done the setup here so final thoughts on this Made in Mexico Fender Jazz Bass Deluxe Model. Very pretty bass. I mean, classic jazz bass. Alder body, maple neck. So the big difference, of course, is the active electronics. Passive active switch. The noiseless jazz pickups. Of course, we need some batteries for that. So what was the problem with this bass? Well, the neck... Had a crazy up bow. Now I suspect it's because it was sitting in a gig bag in the previous owner's house for about three, four years with nothing ever done to it, wasn't played much. So that's what happens when you leave an instrument under full string tension that's not being played or adjusted, you know, seasonally. So a lesson to everybody, adjust your guitars <laughs> and play them. Anyways, pretty guitar. So hopefully the neck adjustment will hold. We'll see with time. You know, the summer will swell everything up again. And maybe in the fall have the owner bring it back and we'll give it another checkup. Alright, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye for now.